tools and materials. Exacto knife or box cutter, PVC, pliers, hot glue gun, heat gun, EVA foam, paint, a pen, a spring, a cereal box, paper clips, chopsticks, several sheets of white paper, masking tape, dremel, a glass jar from the Salvation Army, a two liter soda bottle, and a rubber band. Cut the ends off the soda bottle and remove the label. Cut and dremel pieces of EVA foam for the back of the glass jar. I guess it's supposed to be a serum vial or something. Cut this piece for the stock of the gun and make sure the jar fits through the hole. This is the general shape of the handle. Cut it out in two mirrored pieces to hide the rough side in the middle. Glue them together. Use scrap EVA to make the section between the handle and the jar. I didn't like the look of this, so I covered it in cardboard from a cereal box. Paint the cardboard black. Cut these sections for the body of the gun. Use scrap EVA to make an internal support structure. Connect the top of the two sides to form an arch beneath which the barrel will sit. I made the barrel out of printer paper because I couldn't find the right size PVC and I didn't want to go to the store. It was zero degrees out side when I built this. There were no degrees. None. Insert the barrel. Cut these pieces for the unusual structure of the muzzle. Cut a hole for the barrel and dremel it smooth. Slide it over the barrel and use more scrap foam to make it look wider. Paint the barrel black inside and out. Drill a small hole below the barrel and insert a chopstick that's also painted black. Connect the sides behind the muzzle. Use the one and a half inch PVC for the upper structure. Cut a three and three fourth inch section. Without a PVC cutter, your cut will come out slanted. If this happens, you'll need to dremel it flat. Also, make sure there's a hipster chick in the background for this step, otherwise it won't work. Mark and cut this opening in the top. You'll need to use this type of dremel bit. Make this completely useless upper barrel out of PVC and foam. I mean seriously, it does nothing. Cut two massive circles. Use an old CD to trace the circle because it's the right diameter and come on, who still uses CDs? Attach the circle. You may have to cut a small flat portion on the bottom where it connects to the gun. Cut the smaller circle for the back and drill a hole in it. Paint it red. Paint the PVC gray to match the foam. Cut two three inch circles with 12 holes in them. I'm making these fake syringes out of paper tubes and paper clips because I only have two real syringes and I need them as props in other videos. Assemble the spindle like so. Cut up a pen and use part of the casing and the cap for the center of the drum magazine so the spindle can rotate freely and without friction. Put the soda bottle plastic in place, but don't glue it until after you've slid the chopstick through the spindle. Hot glue will warp the plastic of the soda bottle, so you will have to wait until it's half dry before you press the plastic to the glue. Make the handle out of scrap EVA. I was going to use metal for this, but then I didn't. Use a chopstick and the spring from the pen to make the trigger move correctly. Make the rest of the trigger structure, which makes no logical sense by the way, out of scrap EVA foam. Use a rubber band to make the needles spin. After the test film, I'll show you how to use editing to make the gun shoot. Paint the back of the glass jar turquoise or 1950s trailer green. Three people got that joke, but it was worth it. Complete the upper part of the serum jar with PVC and, you guessed it, foam. I tried using rubber buff to make parts of the gun look silver, but it didn't quite work out how I planned, so I'll probably just buy better spray paint in the future. The last thing I did was put two machine screws in the front. So there will be a test film for this. Again, it'll have very little to do with TF2, but it'll be pretty fun.